For over a thousand generations, the Jedi Knights were the guardians of peace and justice in the Old Republic, before the dark times, before the Empire. We're talking about darkness, and when darkness (laughs) hits, and I'm always thinking about Star Wars, so what to do when the darkness hits? Can't necessarily whip out your lightsaber and do some damage, so in real life, we have some other strategies. What are you going to do? Mended light. We've all experienced, and I know you have, uh, really dark, heavy times where you feel just weighed down with yeah. depression, with anger, with grief, with fear, yeah. and it's just like the light's not going to come through. And Alicia has a quote, as she often does. <laughs> as I often do. So C.S. Lewis said, Here is a joy that cannot be shaken. Our light can swallow up darkness, but darkness cannot infect our light. Mm. And that's such a hopeful statement. And once again, when we talk about hope and light, like I don't want it to be confused with with toxic positivity. Right. That's not what we're talking about. Pretending everything's okay and just pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and everything's great. Yeah. So that's not what we're talking about. But at the same time, we can recognize like, yeah, there's serious challenges in life. Mm -hmm. And we go through serious challenges. And the goal isn't to pretend like it's not happening or to hide from it or to compare our challenges to someone else's challenges and be like, well, my life's not that bad. Right. Like, it is real. And invalidate ourselves. Like, suffering is suffering. Yeah, suffering is suffering. Um, And we need the support to move through that. I love the principle that you can't turn off the dark. You can only turn on the light. Right. It is the light that chases away the darkness. But how? How do we do that? I mean, it's, it's a beautiful principle. Yeah. It really clicks with us in an artistic sort of way. Yeah. But boots on the ground, practical, yeah. crap has hit the fan, my life feels like it sucks and it's never going to get better, or I feel like I suck and I'm never going to get better, what do we do to handle that? To borrow another C.S. Lewis quote, to defeat the darkness out there, you must defeat the darkness within yourself. Because the truth of the matter is, it, it feels sometimes like darkness is encroaching from the outside, but we are, all of us, like a ship. And we're like a ship on a stormy sea, and it cannot sink us unless the water gets in. And so if you have water in the side of the ship, it's all about, okay, how do we get the water out? So how do we get the darkness out? Well, we have three ideas, three keys, three essentials, really. There, I landed on that one. I like that one. Uh, What are they, Alicia? (laughs) Well, okay, and I'm going to answer that question. But I I love this topic and I love that we're doing this video Um, and then this conversation about light and then our brand, right? Mended light, right? Mm -hmm. Because I believe that we all have light within us and sometimes we dim it, sometimes it gets covered up, sometimes we feel like it needs mending. But in referencing C.S. Lewis's quote that you must defeat the darkness within yourself and you defeat that darkness within yourself by turning up the light within yourself, right? right? Whether that darkness is life experiences or emotions or however we want to phrase it, right? There are three supportive tools or three supportive ways of looking at it. We can sit with it, we can learn about it, or we can move through it, Mm. right? We can sit with the emotion, we can learn about the emotion, we can move through it, or we can sit with the experience, we can learn about the experience, or we can move through the experience. I do believe moving through the experience is the, the last step. It's the end game. Yeah, yeah it, it is the end game to integrate our emotions, to integrate our experiences. But at the same time, we're not always ready to do that, and that's okay. No, and I, and I look at, for most people, and myself included, we kind of want to jump to that one. Right? Can we move through it? Yeah. Or feel like we should. Or feel like we should. Like, well, yeah, because there, there's such a stigma. Like, we believe that happiness and peace should be our default setting. And even though that's what we're striving towards, there is a dark underside of that mentality, which is if I'm sad, if I'm angry, if I'm grieving, there's something wrong with me that I need to fix as soon as possible. We believe that because a lot of the environments we grew up in yeah. didn't know how to provide emotional safety and emotional acceptance stop crying be happy cheer up right these are the things because one we care about people we want them to feel happiness but also when others are unhappy we don't know how to manage our discomfort and so sometimes parents come at it from that angle right and friends and teachers and and just hey it's okay 
don't worry, be happy, right? right. And well, stop crying. And, and generationally, um, emotions weren't the pr- priority. Survival was the priority, right. <laughs> right? And so that's like that's passed down generationally. Yeah. And so what we are seeking to do, one of the things that we're seeking to do, um, and and I've talked about this so much in so many of our videos, is it has to be safe first. Like to heal, it has to be safe. You have to be physically safe. You have to be emotionally safe. We have this culture that that may or may not be supportive of creating emotional safety. Yeah. And so we have the opportunity, even if we didn't come from a family of origin or a culture that created that for us, we can do that for ourselves, yes. right? And learning how to sit with our emotions, learn about our emotions and move through them is part of creating that safety. So why sit with the emotion? Yeah. Because on, on the surface of it, it looks like, okay, move through it as quickly as possible so you can get mm-hmm. you can manage the discomfort. And if you don't know how to move through the discomfort, okay, then learning about the emotion is part of that. I get that. But why just sitting with it? That to me feels like putting a pork chop on a dog's nose and making it just sit there to wait for the relief of eating it. Like sitting with the, with your sadness, sitting with your grief, sitting with your anger, it just feels like, why would I want to do that? And I know there's a reason. But I just wanted to play that one back. <laughs> So this could look like some form of meditation or pondering or prayer or whatever that feels like to you, right? You could be asking yourself questions. You could be asking your higher self questions. Before we can change anything, there first has to be an awareness, right? And so often we're conscious of the pain that is being caused. We are not clear on what's underneath that pain. And so quite often we're real familiar with that pain, but what's underneath it and why is it there? And what is it trying to teach us? Well, and this is precisely why in mental health, you get an assessment, an evaluation. This is why we have diagnoses. We don't rush into treatment. First, we need to understand. And there's a similar thing with what I do a lot of with family counseling and relationship counseling, not rushing into fix before you actually accurately understand the situation. It's the same thing with a mechanic, with a dentist. It's the same thing with whatever is going on, taking the time to observe and and listen. And I think that's also very true with our emotions because you've heard me say this a lot. Mm -hmm. Our emotions aren't good or bad. They just are. They just exist. The question is, what are they trying to teach us? And if we rush to correct, if we rush to fix, we may actually be stuck in the pain longer because we have failed to accurately assess what's going on. So we're fixing the wrong things or approaching it from the wrong angles. Well, and a lot of times when we are rushing to fix, it's because there's judgment there. Mm-hmm. It's because, oh, it's not okay for me to be sad. It's not okay for me to grieve. It's not okay for me to feel heaviness. Or anger. Or, or anger. Yeah, yeah, anger's a big one. And it's not okay because in some form it wasn't safe, yeah. right? So I never learned how to do it in a healthy way. And so there's, there's judgment there. And so when we aren't willing to sit with it, it's because of the judgment. And to counteract that judgment, we have the opportunity to treat ourselves with self-compassion. And that's why it's so painful to sit with it. Yeah. Is, and, and when you're sitting with it, that's part of gaining the clarity of like, oh, what is coming up for me? Oh, what do I think about myself because I feel angry or because I feel sad? And then once you've met that judgment with self-compassion, you can then dive into curiosity well, why do I feel this way? Mm -hmm. Why do I have these behavior patterns? Because once again, unconsciously, there's always the judgment of, I just need to change. I just need to be different. I just need to not lose my temper. The anger is wrong and bad. So therefore I am wrong and bad, right? That's all the subconscious programming. And the details look different for different people. Like anger for me was a big one. And not feeling accepted on any level with peers was a big one for you, right? Yeah. And for decades, you did rush through that, right? Mm-hmm. Of like, oh, let's just let's just get over it. And for decades, I didn't realize that, um, well, not for decades, but I spent about a decade controlling my anger-ish, maybe, mm-hmm. like, suppressing it, not quite a decade. And then I spent like seven years vilifying it. And then it was one time when I don't even remember what I was sitting with, but I was sitting with something and, and the thought came to me, or at least it came to my awareness because it felt like it came from within me was you are vilifying your anger. 
right? Yeah. And anytime we vilify something or we reject it, that is dissociating from it. And when we take a part of ourselves or something we feel or, or our experiences and we reject it, we can't be whole. We can't be integrated, right? right? And at that point in my maturity, I realized, not I realized, but I, I had learned the principle and I believed the principle that you just stated, like emotions aren't bad. They're not right or wrong. They just are. They're just there. So our emotions are trying to tell us something. And so if I vilify my anger, I'm rejecting that part of myself, but I'm also rejecting what it's trying to tell me. And my anger is a protection mechanism, right? And so it was a whole different way to look at how what anger plays in my life and my relationship with it. Well, and, and learning about the emotion or experience is the second essential. What is it teaching us? And we have so, like you said, it used to be we're focused on survival. Mm -hmm. What a time to be alive when there's so much information at our fingertips to help us understand why we're feeling what we're feeling and what to do about it. We have, there are books, there are podcasts, there are videos, there are movies. And there are YouTube channels. There are YouTube <laughs> channels. And I mean, we've created so much content just here to share right. with you. But then on our membership site, we, have, we, we dive even deeper there than we do here on the application and on the education. And with, the how. And on, on the how with our online video courses, with our monthly podcasts, with our live Q&As. And it's just a great time to be alive. It is. Well, and I want to share some of my favorite book resources with you. Like one of my favorite books on self-compassion is Good Morning, I Love You. Um, my favorite book on understanding how our experiences affect our mental, emotional, and physical health is The Body Keeps the Score. And that's the beautiful part. As you, as you have an experience, as you're feeling the darkness in you and you say, what do I need to support myself? If you have the clarity of like, oh, there's three paths, Right. Which, which one do I need? Which one's serving? Which one's supporting, right? Instead yeah. of the judgment of, oh, just stop it. I can't do this anymore. I'm going to go to bed and not get out of bed, mm. which, which is a form of sitting with it, right? It I'm is. not saying that that's, yeah. that's a terrible <laughs> option, right? But it's like that clarity of like, oh, I have three paths and then asking myself and that light in myself, what do I actually need? And then finally, there's moving through the emotion or yeah. experience, which again, you can only do with high chance of success if you've taken the time to sit with it, to understand it, to learn from it, and then to say, here's my plan. And then to assess your plan as yeah. it's going and, and tinker with it as it goes. Well, and in that process of moving through an emotion can look drastically different for different people. Mm -hmm. Like it can look like CBT therapy, EMDR therapy, meditation, somatic movement. It's something you could do with another person or it's something you can do on your own. Like there isn't one right way to do it. Right. Um, there's times where I will sit with an emotion and I'll ponder about it. And, and I've, maybe I've already learned about other things and the pieces all come together. And then I'm like, but then I feel the emotion in my body. Right. Right. And then I'm like, I need to go dancing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> like this dancing, is my dancing is a great way to move that emotion. And I'm someone that often likes to do that process by myself. Yeah. But then there's other times where I'm like, oh, I do need to talk to someone and I do have different therapeutic professionals that I work with on a personal level or just dear friends that we're like, we're on the same wavelength, mm -hmm. right? So moving through the emotion looks like a lot of different things. And it's all about finding what works for you. But to me, a huge, huge part of that is not neglecting the physiological aspect. So like for you, you know, you need to work out on a regular basis. I need to exercise because I need, and I do it for sanity, not for vanity. Yeah. It's not about how I look. It's like, this is where I put my emotions. Well, and it's specifically weightlifting. It's yeah. like that's, that's one of the ways you move emotions, Yeah. right? Well, because things feel heavy, and so when I push the weights, it's like pushing it off of me. That's kind yeah. of the, I think that's, that's a part of it. Also, I, I've been really, this year, focused on getting enough sleep instead of like all the things I want to do at night. It's just saying, you know, I, I actually should make, meet that basic human need, and it's such a game changer in my ability to focus and in how I feel. When I feel sad, now instead of, or, or angry, instead of lashing out or, or whatever, I'm just like, I should probably go take a nap. Yeah. And I do, and it works. And so, like, that's an example of sitting with it, right? You're yeah. like, I'm just gonna sit with this. This is what I need to do. One other thought that I wanna share with you as we've talked about these three principles of moving through darkness is you are your own guru. 
And I don't remember what was going on in my life, but it was recent, sometime in the past few weeks. And there's so many gurus nowadays, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. influencers and whatever. They're just weird. They're just weird. <laughs> anyway. Oh, that's us, though. So. Shh. Okay. Okay. You were talking about this in one of the videos we were filming yesterday that you you were like, you just have this innate knowing who you are and you just don't care what anybody else thinks. Mm-hmm. Like that's one of your superpowers, which is true. And I recognize that that is not the normal human experience. Mm-hmm. Totally not. And so that's always been like a guiding star of sorts for me that like I am my own guru, like I am my own authority. Most of the time it serves me really well. Sometimes the pride kicks in and I have stories about that. (laughs) But for everyone to realize like what you can get resources, you can get support, you can have guides, right? Like I'm not saying, well, don't listen to anyone else, but ultimately you are the best authority for your life. Yeah. You are your own guru. And so reach out, get the support that you need, learn about things, sit with them so you can move through them. But ultimately, like stop looking for the answers out there because they are within each of us. Like your answers are within you. We offer lots of support on our YouTube channel and we do that in different ways. But if you would like more support, we have the Mended Light app. Through voice frequency technology, it measures eight basic positive emotions and eight negative emotions and serves as an emotional thermometer for where you are at in that moment of time. It's like an emotional snapshot. (laughs) No one can make that sound more exciting than you. Uh, That's... That's what she said. No, that's literally what she said. <laughs> um, <laughs> then it gives you recommended videos to support you with specific emotions like increasing love, peace, happiness, confidence, or motivation, or in releasing heavier emotions like anger, sadness, loneliness, or fear. You will be able to choose from custom videos to support you in sitting with, learning about, or moving through the emotions that you are experiencing so that you can let go of the darkness and turn up the light in your life. If this is something that could be supportive for you, check out the link below and you can try it for one dollar. And for our Spanish viewers, un dólar. <laughs> Gracias. Siguen brillando, necesitamos tu luz. That means keep shining, we need your light.